much for being here with me today. I want to introduce that I've got Carrie Parker here, who is the chair of the Austin Board of Realtors Diversity Committee. I'm also uh, a leader with Keller Williams in our market. I want to thank Fee Gentry here as a diversity and inclusion champion and uh, member now, the first black woman to serve on the EXP Board of Directors. Is that right, Fee? That is correct. Absolutely. Yep. Congratulations yep. on <laughs> that you. position and, that, and that, that honor. That's awesome. Um, I, I wanted to call you guys here to just have a conversation in our marketplace about why the things that are happening in our world matter in the context of the work that you do as, as practitioners of real estate, as what I like to call builders of community. So Carrie, maybe because you're in service in the association, you could start us off on that front. Absolutely. Um, I think what people don't understand is that real estate touches so much more in a community than just selling homes because the selling of the homes is attached to taxes, which is attached to schools, which is attached to, you know, the revenue that comes into the neighborhoods, the better schools you have, the more um, retail stores you get. So it's all connected to each other. And it kind of all starts with that one piece of purchasing a house and getting that investment for yourself. And it just kind of grows the neighborhood and, and the community from, from that one level. Yeah, so the people you serve and the way that you serve them it, your work has an impact that is so long lasting. I mean, be, obviously realtors know the value of homeownership in the context of wealth building. But when you think about the implications of that uh, from a societal level, it's huge. I mean, look at the power you hold individually and, and how amazing if you're to use that power in a way that perpetuates inclusion, right? Fee, would you, anything to add to that? I mean, I, I agree with both both the things that you said. Like, like we said, as real estate agents, we are connectors. And so we are connectors to the power sources, the systems that be. Um, we're, we're also, you know, individually connected in our communities, in the fabric of the community. We are, that's what we do. And so it is really important for us to understand our roles as what I will always call us as culture carriers as well. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I, I think it's powerful when we define ourselves more um, impactfully than just the title we hold as a practitioner or a realtor. So that, that's awesome. Um, so it, we've established that it's important, the work that you do, right? And if, if we believe that, and if our membership believe that, and I think that they do, then why is it important that they get informed about what's happening in our country right now? Why is it important that they have conversations about that today? B, you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, we, we need to, it's, it's, First of all, it's from a historical sense. So we need to go, always go to back to understand what has happened historically in our country and that, that, when we look at that in a very small snapshot and then why we're here today and what we do moving forward. So historically, there has been systematic and um, institutionalized racism in our country that has never been addressed. And so it's like when you have a storm that's under brewing, people are like, oh, so surprised and shocked. We're not, I mean, like, you know, like we're not, when you continue to have something that's just this underwarming, you don't, you don't take care of this little cinder that's burning, right? Then all of a sudden we have a flame. So fast forward, you know, 60, 70 years when you have housing discrimination policies that affect us, you know, mass incarceration, all of that, right? You know, keeping people, um, keeping people suppressed with voter suppression, all those things. Then you come and like we said, we go now we're at home ownership. So we look at today, we're looking at, you know, these systems and institutions that 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 um that that continue to affect us and impede us as black people and actually as communities in general i don't want to you know i always say yes it's it's black people that this particular issue is but it does affect everybody in the community because now we have people who are now burning down our businesses and, and and burning homes down and that affects people's income directly and it affects their um it affects their livelihood and yeah. so um what was the other what was the other part of the question that you asked? <laughs> like I was just rumbling. <laughs> no, that was great. And okay. yeah, I, and, and I think you okay. spoke a little bit to the history there, the systemic history mm -hmm. of, of uh, racism in our country and of things that have led us to where we are today. And I know Carrie, within the diversity committee at ABOR and certainly the work that we've done on an advocacy front, we know that the land use patterns of our city today still reflect uh, transgressions and, and mistakes of our past. And you know we know that we have to accept that in an effort to move forward, right? Because the committees had that conversation, haven't they? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's it's interesting when you get, um, for instance, the diversity committee. 
you have so many different um, nationalities in one room and they all have very, very different experiences, but at the base of it, it's, it is that racism piece. And so while I might not have had the same experience as, as my Latina friends and, 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 you know, Indian friends and all the other people that are represented in that room, it's all still the same uncomfortable feeling. It's all still the same uncomfortable conversation. But what you have to make people understand is we know it's an uncomfortable conversation. We know it's going to be awkward for you. We know it's going to feel awkward, but you have to get over that awkwardness in order to talk about it, to, to make a change. And so I think when um, people are talking to each other about these things, just put it out there. It's the elephant in the room. Yes, it's awkward. We're going to have to talk about it. So for a colleague that wants to do better and wants to get more informed, what, co what questions should they be asking in, in that kind of conversation? If it's, it, let's take the awkward out of it and help them de-escalate that feeling, but help them be productive in their pursuit to understand. I think you have to take that defensiveness away because whenever you first start talking about it, people always want to say, oh, but that's not me. Oh, but I don't do that. Well, there might be things you're doing that you don't know you do mm -hmm. um, simply, simply because it's what you've always done in life. I mean, there are things that we all learn as kids most minorities learn as kids not to do. When you go in a grocery store, don't touch a bunch of stuff. Like don't, don't, you know, make sure no one's following you when you walk around, make sure you always have your ID on you. You know, it's things that, that most people don't have to think about. We're taught as young children that we have to do those things because you never know what's going to happen. And so when you say that to someone, they're like, Oh, well, I never had to do that when I was a kid. Exactly. And so it's, it's kind of making them see that, your everyday normal activities are things that I was told not to do because I need to be careful and I need to protect myself. Yeah. And so I think once you put it in that, that little twist of the mindset of you can just go out and hop in the car and drive somewhere without your ID and you forget it, it's no big deal. I probably would never do that. <laughs> and so it really is just kind of educating on a, a more baser level and getting over that defensive you know, I, I would never do that. I've never done it. I whatever. And making them understand that it's not actions that you're doing. It, it's just this, the nature of the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I get that you're speaking to, to like providing context for the experience and the differences between them. Cause people exactly. might say, well, I, I know it must be different, but I don't know how it's different. And you're just, if you'll listen long enough, you can help to under you can seek to understand that and have it exactly. defined for you. B, what other questions would you encourage our, our colleagues to, to ask? Um, I always ask our colleagues to to ask questions and tell stories, right? Say, you know, and I always say, you know, listen to the stories, but I also ask them to ask, you know, like we said, <clears throat> like Carrie just talked about, how do do I call you black or African American? Does it, you know, does it offend you? about here or you know things that they're that they may be curious about to ask specific questions but the other thing is I, what we've been doing is um in my group has just been challenging people um to go outside of don't be go outside of their comfort zone and have conversations with people who don't look like you go to different churches go to different restaurants invite them when's the last time you've invited somebody of a different nationality to your house hey, specifically let's talk in this in this context black people when's the last time you've had a, a black colleague over, you know, had lunch or, or lunch with them or tea or invited them over to your house. We, you know, we're not doing that in this day and age, right? But or just, to, yeah, right, you can zoom, right, you can zoom <laughs> with them, but friend. yeah, yeah, okay. but, but to ask those uncomfortable, to ask those questions and let them know that it's a safe space to ha hold these conversations. Um, yeah. I, I think that's where it is um, from there. And then have people question their unconscious biases mm -hmm. and say, and, and so sometimes I just use a, a certain like criteria about, you know, about certain things, you know, what makes you uncomfortable about being around black people? What, you know, have you ever had this thought about Muslim women? What do you, you know, what do you really think when you see Muslim women, mm -hmm. you know, in, in dressed in a burqa, you know, I mean, those kind of questions um, in a, again, in a safe space. And then people go, Oh, well, I feel like this, or, you know, I feel like this way, and, and, and conversations ensue, yeah. 
Um, B, you, you said unconscious bias, and it made me think that, you know, that is not a term that everybody is familiar with or, or fully understands. Can you help define that maybe in a way that's accessible sure, for us? Sure. Unconscious bias simply means things that you don't think about, like in, a, in the context of other people's perceptions in a, really, in a relationship. So an, an idea, uh, like unconscious bias might be something like, huh, when I see a Black man um, approaching me on the sidewalk, I clutch my purse, and you just wonder, like, like, hmm, or you have thought he may, you know, he may be, he looks dangerous, right? That's an unconscious, that's a thought that's like, oh, he looks dangerous to me. I'm gonna clutch my purse or go across the street, or, or this person looks looks Asian, so I'm just assuming they are Chinese, and they could be. Filipino, <laughs> like just, just assumptions that we make. Yeah. Just, yeah. And the kind of behavioral reaction. Behavior, yeah. The behavioral yeah. reaction is different. Yeah. 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 And some people don't even, they, they don't know they're doing it. And, yeah. and, but what I always tell people is if, if there are instances where you may not actually be racist or have racist tendencies, it's just because you don't know anything different. So if you grew up in an all white school in an all white neighborhood and you didn't have any minorities, it's not that you're racist, it's just you're never exposed to it. So if you pick a realtor, for instance, you're gonna pick the realtor who's white because that's what you know and that's what you're used to. It's not because you don't like black people or you don't wanna be around them, it's just that's, that's not your wheelhouse. And so when I always tell people, I'm like, it's not that you are overtly racist, it's just you need to be further educated because it's, you just, it's something you've never experienced before. Right. And so to B's point, part of that education is exposure and just trying to reach out and ensure that the people that you're in community with reflect all different shapes and sizes and colors of folks, because it makes a difference in how you will respond environmentally to your day-to-day -day interactions, right? right? It changes that unconscious when you start to understand different experiences that people have. Right. Exactly. And so and I was going to say this, Emily, we also have like members of, in the board who, because I lived in a small town and, it, you know, I've lived in small towns and it's, you know, 100% homogeneous. And they're like, well, how do I, you know, how do I address this? A same kind of thing, right? Reach out, drive, you know, drive 50 miles outside of your small town <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> I'm just picking on small towns, right? To <laughs> but, but, you might have, but you might have to leave and get, um, become uncomfortable to make that extra effort to, to do so. And then read. That's the other thing. There's so much information out there um, in terms of resources and books. So to educate yourself, you know, and, and to reach out and talk to people, join, you know, join Facebook groups, have, watch, watch and listen um, with the, and interact with people who, who are unlike you, you know, who are different, like different, they're we're, we're more alike than, than not, but who have different um, colors of skin or sexual identities or orientation, et cetera, yeah. yeah. So, so one thing I think that can, can be overwhelming is that everybody's got a resource for you, right? I mean, everybody's yeah. got an opinion about, about, what, about what's everybody happening in the world. <laughs> and as we know, not every social media person is an expert. So, so let me ask you guys, as, as folks that I trust will give their best input, what are some good resources? What are I don't know, a podcast, a book you love, like w help us find some resources that would be valuable for the members to look into. Sure. One of my favorites for me is Color, Color of Change. I like that um, it's a social justice platform and they put out good content and they're not, you know, so political. So I do like that. Yeah. Um, and then there's, I mean, there's other leaders that you can follow out on Facebook on, you know, diversity inclusion topics. Um, I like Diversity Net. Um, they're really good about putting out information about all of, of you know all sorts of diversity and inclusion topics. Um, um, are, are really really good. And um, and then Carrie, can I plug our committee for a minute and just say <laughs> that, I do, that I do think that if you'll you know hang in there and pay attention to some of the work that's coming down the pipeline from the diver from the diversity committee at ABOR, you know, we're going to hope to be a, a foundational resource for our whole marketplace in just changing the dynamics that we, we know exist sometimes. Absolutely. And I mean, just from the work we did last year, um, I know that ABOR is, is leaps and bounds ahead of the other boards associations because you guys reached out to other associations to have this conversation and they weren't having it. And so, you know, it forced other associations across the country to start having that conversation. And so I really think it's, it's amazing that ABOR has such a vested interest in 
us as realtors and our livelihoods and making sure that we're heard and understood that not only are you doing it here, you're reaching out across the country to make sure everyone else is doing it as well. And so I, I wanted to thank you guys for that because I think it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, thank well, you're you. You're making yeah. it happen, Carrie, because yeah, you're the awesome. chair. But <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's and awesome. I mean, yeah. Support you. So we're, I mean, we're thankful that our marketplace is one that wants to continue this kind of conversation because we think that it would be amazing to be a leader in this kind of change. I mean, what a what a gift to us as a as an organization and as a marketplace. Let's, uh, let's leave our folks with any last tips or actions, anything like just tangible that you think folks can do today to just kind of begin to change the world a little bit. Just be open to education. Be open to, to hearing what people have to say and not be so defensive because defensive makes us turn, turn off our ears. So we don't want to do that. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's, I, 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 I second that motion. The other thing is like, like I said, breathe and imagine yourself in someone else's shoes. Be compassionate. Um, like I said, mouth closed, you know, mouth closed and ears open um, and heart open. I think this is part of it. I think part of this is also a spiritual issue as well, you know, like that conditioning and training. So I think that's part of it as well. Um, and then we just, and then um, let's, let's also challenge our leaders within our broker, brokerages around town to make them, to have them have the conversations. Um, if you don't know where your company stands, um, that you're working, that you're working with, you want to examine that business that you're, that you're having a business in a relationship with. And so I think it's highly important for us to, to also have those conversations around this area with, with these, with individual brokerage or brokers, uh, brokerages. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent point. You, um, in, in, re in the real estate world, you vote with your feet, right? And when mm -hmm. you choose to join a brand and join a firm, you, you are joining with that company's culture. Mm -hmm. And we talk about that as kind of a soft side, you know, value associated with the brokerage that you choose, but it's an important thing that you mm -hmm. align with the, all the, the concepts and all the values that that broker mm -hmm. holds. Um, mm -hmm. it, I think that's a great point as in terms of something that you can do deliberately. Yeah, yeah. Well, you ladies are awesome. I uh, so appreciate your leadership in our marketplace. I appreciate you having this conversation and helping our membership think differently about some of the things that are going on right now. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's a great conversation. Mm -hmm.